hashtag PD skill and hashtag let's learn and go together. Every day is a good day. There is something to learn, care, and celebrate. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to our institution of global professional free webinar. Thank you all for joining with us in this marvelous morning. My lovely audience, today I am your host. I am Kramrul, coordinator of Bangladesh from coordinator of IGP from Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to be associated with IGP as a global member and I feel honored to host this webinar and it's my delight to welcome you all to our institution of global professional free webinar. Once again, thank you all for joining with us in this session. Before we have completed our 724 webinars successfully. Today, I will be presenting webinar number 725 and the topic is adult learning development skill. Today, we have a speaker from Philippines. Today, our speaker name is Josephine A. Tolentino. He is a technology and livelihood education teacher of Dollars National High School. He is also coordinator association of ST John M. A. Bayani. Before studying the program, I request everyone to share this webinar in your news feed and social media. And don't forget to mention your favorite person in the comment box. Let's we welcome our speaker to the screen. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. Hello, and thank you, sir, so um, for that introduction. And thank you, ma'am. Thank you for this opportunity to speak again with the Institute of Global Professionals, IGP. So again, I will uh, introduce myself. I am Josephine Tolentino, and I'm speaking again live here in the municipality of Magalang, province of Pampanga in the Philippines. Before I start, allow me to greet my fellow professionals and our dear audience a pleasant day good afternoon good morning good evening i am currently teaching at dolores national high school and i am handling technology and livelihood education or tle and i am the current coordinator organist choir trainer of the association of saint john mary Vianney in our parish Today, I am glad to share with you here the presentation of my topic. Ad adult learning development skills. Let me go directly to these topics that I will going to discuss. The Bloom's Taxonomy and History. The three domains of Bloom's Taxonomy definition of pedagogy and andragogy, the difference between pedagogy versus andragogy. So for our objectives, discuss what Bloom's taxonomy, its history, domains, and level of assessment. Define pedagogy and its importance in teaching. Define andragogy and its main concept. Pedagogy versus andragogy. Let me start my topic. So, are you familiar with Bloom's taxonomy? Of course, every one of us know this Bloom's taxonomy. So, Bloom's taxonomy has been a staple of educators for decades, particularly in the cognitive domain. Educators of both children and adults must be aware of the theory, history, and how it has changed over the years. A fundamental understanding of Bloom's taxonomy is essential. Hello, so let me give you, yes, sir. Ma'am, your slide is not moving. Uh, sir, it is moving now. I just didn't press the button. Okay, so, ma'am. Okay, ma Thank you. Okay. Bloom's taxonomy is hierarchical model that characterizes 
learning objectives into varying levels of complexity from basic knowledge and comprehension to advance evaluation and creation. So there, uh, that time, Bloom, Bloom's taxonomy was originally published in 1956. And then the taxonomy was modified each year for 16 years after it was published. So psychologists have devised additional taxonomies to affective or emotional and psychomotor or physical learning, which will be discussed uh, as we move on. In 2001, Bloom's initial taxonomy was devised to reflect how learning is an active and not a passive one. So there are three learning domains which will be discussed. Uh, the cognitive, affective, and then the psychomotor. Although Bloom's taxonomy is met with several valid criticisms, it is still widely used in the educational setting today. Do you agree with that? I hope so. And now, what about the development of the taxonomy? So it was Benjamin Bloom who was an educational psychologist and committee of the educators at the University of Chicago. And then in 1950s, he collaborated with Max Engelhardt, Edward Forrest, Walter Hill, and David Kra Wo, and then provided a sense of structure to the various levels of cognitive function, functioning uh, mental processes we experience. And then the, through the series of studies, uh, there, they have found out their focus is the student achievement. After the student achievement, the focus, uh, their findings is that teachers lack of variation in teaching, in teaching their um, lesson. In other words, teachers were not meeting each uh, individual student's need and instead relied upon one universal curriculum. Therefore, to address this, Bloom and his colleagues postulated that if teachers were to provide individualized educational plans, students would learn significantly better. And the hypothesis inspired, this hypothesis inspired the development of Bloom's mastery learning procedure in which teachers would organize specific skills and concepts into long units. And of course, the completion of each unit would be followed by an assessment through which the student would reflect upon what they learned, just like what we are doing uh, this time. And lastly, that every student would be able to master the subjects when teacher relied upon suitable learning conditions and clear objectives was guided by Bloom's taxonomy. So this is how the development of the taxonomy or the Bloom taxonomy is all about. And here, we have the original taxonomy in 1956. So the taxonomy provides different levels of learning objectives divided by complexity. After Only after a student master one level of learning goals through formative assessments, correct activities and other enrichment exercises can they move on to the next level as to Gasky 2005. This is really correct because just like uh, climbing a staircase, we cannot climb a staircase if we were just going to skip to how many steps, but we have to do it step by step, just like uh, with this taxonomy wherein uh, it starts with the lower le level, knowledge, understanding, application, and it goes up to the evaluation. Hello, ma'am. Yes? Many sl slide is not moving. Uh, is it moving now? No, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, sir. Is it moving? No, ma'am. It's not moving. Oh, wait. 
I will go back, sir. Sir, I will go back. This is the original taxonomy in 1956. As we uh, see here, the taxonomy provides different levels of learning objectives divided by complexity. Only after a student masters one level of learning goals through formative assessments, corrective activities, and other enrichment exercises. Can they move on to the next level as to Gaski in 2005? So this or taxonomy, if you will going to see it, it is just like climbing a staircase. We have to do it step by step, not skipping one, uh, two steps uh away in order to master so do you see it now sir sir yes ma'am can you see it now i see you slide yes ma'am it's not moving it's not moving it's not moving not moving yes moving yeah. ma'am it's not moving Okay. Can I just do can I just do it like this one? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I anyway, uh the uh, the presentation, the animation will not be moving. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am, it's moving. It's moving. <laughs> okay, so this what do you see in this picture? Three domains so, of three domains of Bloom's taxonomy. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Do you see it now? Okay, ma'am. You can okay. you hear? Here we can see the three domains of Bloom's taxonomy. The first domain is the cognitive. As you can see in the picture, we have the cognitive picture here, image. And then the second one is the effect, affective, and then the psychomotor. So when you say con cognitive, it is concerned about intellect, thinking. So therefore, it focuses on the acquisition and application of knowledge and is widely used in the educational setting. That's why when we make our lesson plan, this is always the first cognitive that we need to consider. And we have the second one, affective domain. So when we say affective domain, it is concerned about emotion, our feelings. Definitely, the affective domain describes learning objectives that emphasizes a feeling tone, an emotion, or a de uh, degree of acceptance or rejection. Most of us use these emoticons in our social media whenever we reply uh, to the text messages if we like the messages that we send we always put a happy face but if we do not agree of course uh, we will uh, press the other one uh, which does uh, emoticons that uh, looks like they do that do not agree so effective objectives vary from simple attention to select phenomena to complex but eternally consistent qualities of uh, character and conscience. Therefore, the values, emotional sets, or uh, what we call the different affective domains that are being used. And then next, here are the description of each taxonomy starting from the basic level. So we have the first receiving, second is responding, valuing, organ organization, characterization. So those are the five, five basic level that we use uh, in the description of each taxonomy. And then the third one is the psychomotor. When we say psychomotor domain, 
uh, which seems seems so in 1972 includes physical movement, coordination, and use of the motor skills area. Therefore, this is concerned in what subject? It is physical education. Development of these skills requires practice and is measured in terms of speed, precision, distance, procedures, or techniques in execution. Thus, psychomotor skills range from manual tasks such as digging or ditch or washing a car to more complex tasks such as operating a complex piece of machinery or dancing. Definitely, we use this psychomotor domain whenever we are practicing our dance steps. And then the seven major categories are listed in the simplest behavior to the com most complex. We have the one perception or the awareness. We have the keywords to assess, describe, detect, differentiate, distinguish, identifies. For the set, it means readiness to act. The keywords begin, displays, explains, moves, proceeds, reacts, show, states, volunteer. So another, for the third one, we have the guided response. The early stages in learning a complex skill that includes imitation and the trial and error. Of course, we have the keywords, copies, traces, follows, and etc. Fourth, the mechanism or the basis proficiency. This is the intermediate stage in learning uh, a complex skill. The keywords are assembles, calibrates, constructs, dismantles, and etc. So the next uh, other one, five, complex response or complex over response or the expert. So the skillful performance of monitor acts that involve complex movements patterns. So these words are being adapted in our uh whenever we make our lesson plan the number six adaptation adaptation i mean skills are well developed into an individual can modify movements patterns to fit special requirements keywords adapts alters changes rearranges uh, recognizes revises varies and the last one, origination, creating new movement patterns to fit a particular situation or specific problems. So therefore, we have the keywords, arranges, arrange, I mean, builds, combines, composes, and many more. So we have six levels that can be used uh, in to structure to structure the learning outcomes and assessment of your courts. Okay. So these are the six levels. So the slides is not moving. The first level when we remember, when we learn to remember, there just uh, what we call the, there is a rote memorization recollection of facts without much understanding. So my example here is about learning about lemons. We want to remember the name, shape, color, size, and definitely lemon tastes sour. Now, once we memorize this essentially, essentially meaningless facts, we can move now to the second level. For the second level, it is the understanding uh, or understand. Here, we begin to decode information and learn that lemon is yellow when it is ripe to eat and if it take a bite, it is really sour and then 
they contain lots of vitamin C, which, which is a great source of antioxidant and keep us healthy. Now, as we really understand lemon, we can work it out. And for the third level, we apply what we know. Of course, we when we understood what why lemons are sour, they are also great provi provider of vitamin C. To apply this, a meaningful way, we could boil a lemon in a hot water and add some honey. And then we can serve this hot lemon to our six sisters who's in need of treatment. So that is the third level. To the fourth level, of course, we have analyze so when this involves examining here and break down information into components determining how the parts relate to one another and finding evidence to support generalizations we study the lemon fresh lemon flesh examine the skin and looks all levels of vitamin c we conclude that we can eat everything inside while the skin tastes bitter contains traces of toxic pesticides it ought to be consumed now let us move to the next level of course we can see here the evaluate we analyze critic and compare to evaluate our lemon as good source of our vitamin we compare it to the other sources, such as oranges and supplements. We look at the following properties, vitamin levels, affordability, taste, and packaging waste. If we evaluate our thoughts critically and without bias, we learn our lemon, where lemon score high and where others score higher. And then the last level, which is now to create after we have learned uh, remember understand apply analyze evaluate we can now create so we are now ready to create as we now really understand lemons also in comparison to similar things we can formulate a, and create plan to make our own natural lemonade and then it is now easy to come up with a cute shop, a good name, lemonade, and a slogan, natural, healthy, and natural, healthy, yummy. So those are what we call the six levels that we have to consider in the Bloom's taxonomy. And uh, to move on, here is another topic. What is pedagogy so are you familiar with the word pedagogy so most of us we are teachers here so pedagogy is a method of teaching in which teachers teach both in the theory and in practice so pedagogy, pedagogy is shaped by educators teaching beliefs and involves their understanding of culture and different learning styles it's, it is essential for students to have meaningful classroom relationships in order to build on prior learning. Therefore, pedagogy, it is the way how we teach, how we understand and teach our subject or course, courses. So what is pedagogy in teaching? Pedagogy and teaching can be referred to as an educator's understanding of how the students learn. So if we have different methods, we can understand or the students can understand and then they uh, prefer what method they really prefer in, uh, in, the, in teaching. Uh, the teacher, uh, the way teacher shows her method. So next, the teachers are focused on presenting the syllabus to the students in such a way that what is relevant to their needs. 
when presenting the syllabus or the courses, it must be relevant to the needs of the students. So therefore, it is not what the teachers want, but what is the needs or relevant to the needs of the students. And of course, in pedagogy, there, is, there must be a classroom interaction between teacher and students which create a significant impact on the learner's mind. That's why we learn in our uh, pedagogy. We learn, we adjust our methods, and then of course, it is always uh, the students is our focus. And when we teach, we always teach with uh, relevant to, the, to their needs. Another, what is teacher pedagogy? So what is teacher pedagogy? Teacher pedagogy refers to the pedagogy that is centered towards the teacher who gives the most meaningful course information. So here in the pedagogy, the teacher is the centered toward uh is the most important factor aside from the students because he feeds he gives everything to the students and then of course the teacher needs also the cooperation of the the students so in this approach the teacher has a large or great responsibility of giving correct information to the students in the right way irrespective of their learning styles. So it is a big responsibility to our part to teach what is right. And especially in giving information, we have to be very careful. The teacher can give a clear understanding of how the students are doing concerning their learning and also to be an effective model for the target language. Therefore, the teacher must give a clear instruction, clear. Uh, so the objective, the target must be clear here. If the objective is not quite clear, therefore there will be a misconception between the learners and the teacher. Am I right? Okay. So what is pedagogy approach? So we have the uh, number one, behaviorism. So behavior, it is believes that the learner, learning is teacher's focus. Uh, a behaviorist pedagogical approach believes that learning is a teacher focus. It would support the use of direct instruction and in, uh, lecture based lesson. So another, the constructivism. Constructivism is a theory that people acquire through experiences and reflection. In the Philippines, if you have made the RPMS, it is in the CRA number 4, objective number 16, that I will just going to share you. Apply number 16 objective, apply the personal philosophy of teaching that is learner-centered. Therefore, well... Uh, our the students are the center of our uh, activities inside the classroom. So the means of verification, one lesson plan with annotation, explanation, explaining the application of a learner-centered teaching philosophy, such as the constructivism and existentialism used as a basis for planning, designing the lesson. If we were just going to make a lesson and then we do not focus with the, our clients or the students, the lesson will not become successful. And then for the social constructivism, a social constructivism pedagogy may be considered as a mixture of two significances, the teachers and guide the students. Of course, when you say we have to of, uh, teach and also we have to guide the students wherever they are, whatever they are doing. So the last one, liberationalist. Liberationalist is a critical pedagogy developed by the Brazilian educator or Paulo Freire. So therefore, uh, one of the 
comment in our RPMS, uh, when in our COT in the Philippines, no, it is re written there, unlocking the difficulties of the students by using native uh, language. So that is one. Here, the unlock, uh, the un, uh, Paulo uh, Freire unlock the uh, the two barriers, removing the two barriers to learning, the poverty and hunger. So just like you know, when we are teaching our students, we need to unlock what is uh, that difficulties. We have to put it in a very simple way. What is the importance of pedagogy in teaching? One, improves quality of teaching. Two, encourage cooperative learning environment. Three, eliminates monotonous learning. Four, students can follow their ways of learning. And then five, convenient learning approach for all. So we can improve our pedagogy depending or what needs do the students uh, want, the needs. And then next, what is andragogy? Andragogy is the practice of teaching adults. It is derived from the Greek word for man or andras and dif differs great from pedagogy in its practice. So therefore, here the teacher or the adults are have their own experience. So leading the elders. So adults are self-driven and can rely on past experience to solve complex problems, which means that a central focus of leading the elders must be the question of how to be best support them in retaining new ideas, learning new ways of problem solving, and strengthening, deepening thinking. So therefore, here there is already the experience existing. And of course, the definition, andragogy is an adult focus. Here is the picture. It, there are the people around. It deals with various ways in which adults, adults learn in different way in respect with children. It is also believes that methods used to teach children are repeatedly not effective ways of teaching adults. Um, here, there is the teacher. These are the students. And then here, the center is the um, man. And then these are the people who used to listen. Uh, and then this man is already experienced. Just like here, the students do not have the experience and then they just follow. Then we proceed. What is the difference between pedagogy versus andragogy? Uh, in the pedagogy, it is the method of uh, searching teaching the children, okay? While here in the andragogy, it is the method of teaching adults. Here, learners are the students. And then, so here, the students in the pedagogy used to follow the curriculum what is given they are from the teacher the teachers are required what curriculum is uh, whatever the curriculum they will going to follow while here um, they have to andragogy they have to adapt adapt and adjust the curriculum so this is the Difference between pedagogy versus andragogy. And here is a word from the wise. What any person in the world can learn, almost all persons can learn if provided with appropriate, proper, and current conditions of learning. 
With that, I would like to thank all of you for attending this program on our discussion about adult learning development skills. I hope you have learned something from this webinar. And if you want more of the discussion, you can check on this reference from my slide, which you can access online. Thank you, everyone. And please, if you have some more time, fill me out the evaluation from the presentation. Our good facilitator here will send the evaluation link form. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your wonderful presentation you shared with our participants. Thank you, ma'am. Welcome, sir. Ma'am, we are now going to our quiz competition and then we move to our Q&A. So you have to stay in the back stage for some time. Okay, ma'am? Okay. Okay, thank you. Dear participants, today our quiz code is IGP quiz. You can join this slide of... You can join our quiz competition by slider.com and today our quiz code is IGP quiz. Let's you enjoy the quiz video. <laughs> Dear participants, it's our quiz session time. You can join this session by slido.com. And today our quiz code is IGP quiz. You can also scan our QR code from the screen to join this session. And also you can click the link which is already given in comment box. Then you can join this session directly. After quiz session, we have most exciting session that is Q&A. You can also mention your friends in the comment box to join this session. Top 10 quiz competition winners get quiz certificate after the session from our official Facebook page. Our Facebook address is Institute of Global Professionals. We will pick your name from this slido. So join with your full name, which will directly print on your certificate. And today, top 10 quiz competition winners get the quiz certificate. We start our quiz competition after one minute later. So join, hurry up.
now 33 participants join with us After 30 seconds later, we will start our quiz competition. We will start our quiz competition now. Be ready. Our first question is knowledge and development intellectual skill. Is it cognitive domains or psychomotor domains? Psycho cognitive domains is the right answer. On the leaderboard, now the top position is Cyril N. Kelly Joya Magusi, and the second one is Evelyn T. Y. Ferry, and the third one is Alex Javier Alvarez. Let's move up to our next question. Development ends when the human becomes an adult. The statement is true or false? The statement is false. On the leaderboard now, Sadilin Kelly Jo Yamaguchi leading the first position. And the second one is Jinalin. And the third one is Evelyn P. Y. Ferry. Let's we move to our next question. Both the adult and the toddler influence the success of toilet learning. The statement is true or false. The statement is true. On the leaderboard, the top position is Sirlin Kalijo Yamaguchi, and the second one is Jilan Lane, and the third one is Evelyn P. Weiferi. Let's move to our next question. A specific time in development when certain skills or abilities are most easily learned. Is it formal operation stage or critical period? <laughs> critical period is the right answer. On the leaderboard now, Jilal in Bila leading the first position, and the second one is Marie. G. Bandolo and the third one is Christina B. Del Rosario. Our next question is Primary skills of a trainer are listening, speaking, and empathizing, or speaking, presenting, designing activities. Listening, speaking, and empathizing is the right answer. On the leaderboard, now the top position is Marifizi Bandurlo, and the second one is Jinali, and the third one is Christina Bidel Rosario. Let's move to our next question. The process of growth from baby to adult 
is it development or life cycle development is the right answer on the later board now marib ji bandulo leading the first position and the second one is kyung a and the third one is gloria kriya kriya ja our next question is going back to an earlier stage of development is regression or obedience regression is the right answer on the leader board now the top position is marib ji bandulo and the second one is kyung a and the third one is gloria our next question is which of the following is not a learning style is it verbal linguistic or cognitive or dimension cognitive uh, dimension is the right answer on the letter board now the top position is jinalin and the second one is ln is brutus and the third one is marif g bandulo our next question is adult stimulation of language mainly involves dash correcting the child's language error or sharing books rhymes and song and overlaying activities with language sharing books rhymes and song and overlaying activities with language is the right answer on the letter board jinalin is the leading the first position and the second one is ln is brutus and the third one is marif g bandolo our last and final question is what activity is not helpful in learning is it kahoot or scrolling through instagram as calling through an instagram is not helpful in learning congratulations of our top 10 quiz competition winners on the leaderboard the first position is jinali and the second one is ln is brutus and the third one is marif ji bandulo and the following are Thank you everyone for attending today's session. Top 10 quiz competition winners get their quiz certificate after this session from our official Facebook page. Now we move to our Q&A session. Let's enjoy this video.
you, ma'am, for waiting in the packing stage. It's okay. Dear participants, it's our Q&A session. If you have any question, you can ask the question in the comment box. Dear participants, if you have any question related to this topic, you can ask the question in the comment box. After Q&A, we are proceed to our certification process. Participants are required to ask their question in the comment box. Ma'am, our first question is what determine the style of learning in Sile? What determine the style of learning in children? So, in teaching children, what age? It depends upon the age. What kind of learning style you will going? What kind of uh, learning style you will going to um, show them? So, if you are teaching nursery, so there must be a certain program for each level in order to determine the learning style for children and of course these uh, little people do not need uh, it's it's not like us adults uh, we spend more time in our session but for them since they have a short span of concentration they have to have their learning style when you teach them you have to teach them in a very a very few hours fair a very few hours only so you do not need to uh, use the whole period of time only a sec uh, not seconds but uh, maybe half hour so that uh, they will not get bored and then they will go into uh, accept what you are teaching yes uh, madam thank you ma'am for your wonderful answer welcome Our another participant said that it depends on the learning style of a children. We have the multiple intelligence. Yes. Dear participants, we are still waiting for your question. Congratulations, Heidi Serrano, for the lifetime certificate of being an active participant. <laughs> if they do not, uh, yes, there is a we have we have another question. Ah, I thought there. <laughs> the it's question okay. is: Does the local language affect? learning of second language yes of course 
uh, it has a big effect in our teaching, especially in unlocking the uh, difficulties of each learners. So now, since in the K-12, to we have the mother tongue base, so for the younger students and also even the junior high school, we are allowed to uh, translate it in our local language in order that the student may able to understand more uh, in order that learning will become more effective. So local language has effect in the learning of the second language. Thank you for that question, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Our next question is how to deal with the students who experience late development? This is what we most uh, encounter. There are students who are who are what we call late development. So when students are in the stage of late development, um, of course, as a teacher, we need to adjust our level to this one, and we need we don't need to segregate them uh, because all are welcome inside the classroom, inside the school. That's why. Uh, in dealing with this late development, we have to set another program again for that for them to feel that they are welcome and they will be motivated in the uh, classroom, inside the classroom. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. I hope we have no more questions. Thank you very much for your wonderful answer. Thank you also. Thanks. We are very grateful to you, ma'am, for your wonderful presentation and sharing your valuable knowledge with our participants. Okay, sir. Thank you. Ma'am, what is your last and final words for our audience? Okay, to our, to our dear audience, I am happy that I was able to present again. Although uh, the slides are not quite uh, working, but still uh, they try to manage, the IGP try to manage um to deal with it anyway to igp congratulations also to your third anniversary i hope this program will still grow more bigger and bigger more success thank you sir and thank everyone you, thank you dear participants this is free international level quiz competition based on professional development. On the occasion of IGP third anniversary, we are happy to arrange a free international level quiz competition from 4th August to 31 August. We will publish the result on 3rd September 2022 on our website. Top. 10 players get the prizes. For first place, gets 1000 US dollar cash and metal trophy and winning crest and recognized medal and winner's placement base. Frame certificate global base sold books 50 piece and invitation for global online celebration. And second place, 900 US dollar cash and metal trophy winning crest recognized medal winner's placement base frame certificate global base sold book 40 piece and finally invitation for global online celebration and third place 800 us dollar cash metal trophy winning crest recognized medal winner's placement base frame certificate global base sold book 30 piece and invitation for global online celebration we have also fourth place fifth six seven eight nine and finally 10th place 100 us dollar cast and crest recognized medal frame certificate anyone can submit it by august 31 of september we will announce our winner's list on our website. 
our quiz journey link is www.eduigp.com or http slash eduigp.com slash quiz anyone can participate in this world biggest quiz competition before joining please note some points notes number one create an account on our website our website address is edu eduigp.com if you have any account then you can directly join through the given link but if you don't have an account on our website you are not able to join this biggest quiz competition so once again first of all you have to create an account on our website then you can join this quiz session notes number two you have a total of 1000 second to submit a total of 100 question that means 10 second for one question and notes number three minimum passing mark is 60 percent i invite you everyone to join to join this quiz session now we are going to proceed our we are going to proceed our certification process Dear participants, today our program name is Adult Learning Development Skill. And today our certification code is IGP3876. The code is IGP3876. Without code, no one is eligible for certificate. With code, you can claim your certificate anytime and without an account on our website you can visit only but you can do anything functionally so download your certificate you have to go to our website then you have to enroll the program and then you have to put the code and the code is igp3876 and finally you can download your certificate and after downloading your certificate don't forget to celebrate with igp second thank you everyone for attending this session i hope you learn something new from this session thank you everyone stay happy and stay safe